Welcome back to our class on algorithms and data structure. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about sorting. So this will be giving us an introduction to sorting and getting you some of those details. So we'll just get right into it. And so here is a listing of the textbook chapter contents, contents that we'll be covering. So we are familiar with the arranging objects in order from smallest to largest, from, or from largest to smallest. Not only do we order numbers this way, but we also arrange people by height, age, or name, music by title, artist, or album, and so on. Arranging things into either ascending or descending order is called sorting. You can sort any collection of, of items that can be compared with one another. Exactly how you compare two objects depends on the nature of the objects. For example, you can arrange a row of books on your bookshelf in several ways by title, by author, by height, by color, and so on. The designer of a class of book objects would choose one of these ways when implementing the method compare to. So suppose you have a collection of items that need to be sorted in some way. For example, you might want to arrange a group of numbers from lowest to highest or from highest to lowest, or you might want to place some strings in alphabetical order. This chapter discusses and imp implements a few simple algorithms that sort items into ascending order. That is an algorithm that rearranges the first n entries in the collection of sense so that entry one is less than or equal to entry two is less than or equal to all the way up to entry less than or equal to entry n. With only small changes to our algorithms, you can, you will be able to sort entries into descending order. Sorting array is usually easier than sorting a chain of linked nodes. For this reason, typical sorting algorithms sort an array. In particular, our algorithm will rearrange the first n values in an array um, uh, in our array a so that a zero a1, A2, you would put them in an order. However, we also will use one of our algorithms to sort a chain of link nodes and get a comparison of that. So sorting is such a common and important task that many sorting algorithms exist. This chapter ex examines some basic al algorithms for sorting data. Although most of our examples will sort integers, the, the Java implementation given will sort any comparable objects, that is objects of any class that implements the interface comparable and therefore defines the, the method compared to. The efficiency of sorting algorithms is significant, particularly when large amounts of data are involved. When we examine the performance of the algorithms in this chapter and find that they are relatively slow, the next chapter will present sorting algorithms that usually are much faster. So here we'll get into a selection sort. So imagine that you want to rearrange the books on your bookshelf by height with the shortest book on the left. You might begin by tossing all the books on the floor. You then could return them, the, them to the shelf one at a time in their proper order. If you first return the shortest book to the shelf and then the next shortest and so on, you would perform a kind of selection sort but using the floor or another shelf to store your books temporarily using extra space needlessly. Instead, approach your, your intact bookshelf and select the shortest book. Since you want it to be the first on the shelf, you remove the first book on the shelf and put the shortest book in its place. You still have a book in your hands, so you put it in the space formerly occupied by the shortest book. That is, the shortest book is traded places with the, the first book, as figure 15.1 um, shows. You now ignore the shortest book and repeat the process for the rest of the bookshelf. So 15, figure 15.2 shows how a selection sort rearranges an array of integers by interchanging values, beginning with the, the original array. The sort locates the smallest value in the array, that is the, the two in an A3. The value in A3 is interchanged with the value in A0. After the interchange, the, the smallest value is in A0 where it belongs. So, what about iterative selective sorts? The following pseudocode describes an iterative algorithm for the, the selection sort. So, and now in the, this listing, um, 
we see the public method select sort and two private methods at assistant sorting. We can add other sorting methods as we develop them. It is easy to see the, the definition of select sort in a direct translation of the previous pseudocode into Java code. The method get index of smallest searches the array entries a first through a last and returns the index of the smallest among them. The method uses two local variables min and index of min. At any point in the search, min references the smallest value so far. That value occurs at a index of min. At the end of the search, the method returns index of min. Notice that for our purposes here, we could have assumed that the, that last is always n minus one and omitted it as a, a, a parameter. However, this, this general version will be useful in other settings. Since exchanging entries in an array does not involve the method compare to, the method swap can simply use object as the type of these entries. So here's part two, we won't go into that, but just um, you can read that over at your leisure. And then finally for part three in a similar fashion, we'll just skip over that for now. What about a recursive select, selection sort? So selection sort also have a, a natural recursive form. Often recursive algorithms that involve arrays operate on a portion of the array. Such algorithms use two parameters, first and last, to designate the portion of the array containing the entries, a first through a last. The method get index of smallest is in the listing 15.1 illustrates this technique. The, the recursive um, selection sort outcome uses the, this notation, and we're showing it here on this slide. When we implement the previous recursive algorithm in Java, the resulting method will have first and last as parameters. Thus, its header will differ from the header of the iterative method selection sort given in segment 15.5. We could, however, provide the following method to simply invoke the recursive method. Um, so anyway, that's in the textbook. You can see that for, for details. Um, let's talk about an insertion sort. Another intuitive sorting algorithm is an insertion sort. Suppose again that we want to rearrange the books on your bookshelf by height with the shortest book on the left. If the leftmost book on the shelf were the only book, your shelf would be sorted. But you can also have all of the other books to sort. Consider that the second book, if it is taller than the first book, you now have two sorted books. If not, remove the second book, slide. The first book to the right and insert the book you just removed into the first position of the shelf. The first two books are now sorted. Now consider the third book. If, 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 it, if the, the taller um, than the, the second book, you now have three sorted books. If not, remove the third book and slide the second book to the right as, as parts A through C of figure 15C illustrate. Now see whether the, the, the books in your hand is taller than the first book. If so, insert the book into the second position on that shelf as shown in figure 15.3D. If not, slide the, the first book to the right and insert the book in your hand into the first position on the shelf. If you repeat this process for each of the remaining books, your book shelf will be arranged by the heights of the book. Figure 15.4 shows a bookshelf after several steps of the insertion sort. The books on the left side of the shelf are, are sorted. You remove the next unsorted book from the shelf and slide sorted books to the right and one at a time until you find the right place for the book in your hand. You then insert this book into that new sorted location. So now let's talk about an iterative insertion sort. An ins insertion sort of an array partition that is divides the array of two in, into two parts. One part is sorted, initially contains just the first entry in the, in the array. The second part contains the remaining entries. The algorithm removes the unsorted port parts first entry and inserts it into the proper sorted position within the sorted part. Just as we, as you did with the, the bookshelf, you choose the proper portion by comparing the unsorted entry with the sorted entries beginning at the end of the sorted part and continuing toward its beginning. As you compare, you shift array entries in the sorted part to make room for the insertion. 
figure 15.5 that we're showing here illustrates these steps for a sort that is already positioned the first three entries of the array. The three is the next entry that must be placed into the proper position within the sorted region. Since three is less than eight and five, but greater than two, the, the eight and five are shifted to make room for the three. Figure 15.6 illustrates an entire insertion sort of an array of integers. At each pass of the algorithm, the sorted pair expands by one entry as the unsorted pair shrinks by one entry. Eventually, the unsorted pair is empty and the array is sorted. So the following iterative algorithm describes an insertion sort of the entries at indices first through last of the array A to sort the first and entries in the array, the call to the algorithm would be insertion sort A, zero, and N minus one. The sorted pair, the sorted part contains one entry A first, and so the loop in the algorithm begins at, at index first plus one and processes the unsorted part. It then invokes another method, insert, insert in order to perform the insertion in the pseudocode that follows for this method at entry is the value to be inserted into the proper position and, and begin and end our array indices. So in terms of recursive in, in insertion sort, you can describe an insertion sort recursively as follows. If, if you sort all but the last item in the array, a smaller problem that sorting then a smaller problem than sorting the entire array, you then you can then insert the last item into the proper position with, within the rest of the array. The following pseudocode describes a recursive insert sort. You can see that on the slide. And so here is the implementation in terms of um, um, Java. So you can see that for the recursive insert sort, you can describe an insertion sort recursively. Um, so if you sort all but the last item in the array, a smaller problem can be um, defined. And so we're, we're doing this similar to, to what we described in a couple of slides before. So what about the algorithm insert in order? Um, so we'll first have this um, initial draft and then we'll refine it. So the previous method can call the iterative version of insert in, in order given earlier or the recursive version that we now describe. <clears throat> if the entry to insert is greater than or equal to the last item in the sort of position of the array, the, the entry belongs immediately after the last item as in figure 157A illustrates. Otherwise, we remove the last sorted item to the next higher position in the array and insert the entry into the remaining portion as shown in figure 157B. So let's look at a, um, an updated final draft. The, this algorithm is not quite right. The, the else clause will work only if we have more than one entry in the remaining portion of the array. That is, if it, it begin is less than n. If begin and end are equal, for example, the recursive call would be equivalent to insertion, insert in order and entry a begin, begin minus one, which is incorrect. Will end ever equal begin if there are not equal initially? Yes, when an entry is less than all entries, A begin all the way to A end, each recursive call decreases N by one until eventually N equals begin. What should we do in this case? Since the sorted portion consists of one entry, A end, we will move A end to the next higher position and place an entry in A end. And so the following revised algorithm reflects these changes. So let's talk about the insertion sort of a chain of linked nodes. Usually you will sort arrays, but sometimes you, you might need to sort a, a chain of linked nodes. When you do so, the insertion sort is one that is easy to understand. Figure 15.8 shows a chain whose nodes contain integers that are sorted into an ascending order. To begin to see how we can construct an iteration sort from a chain, imagine that we want to insert a node into the chain so that the integers into the node, the, the integers in the nodes remain in sorted order. Suppose that the, the, the node to be inserted into the chain contained the integer six. 
we need to locate where in the chain the, the new node belongs since we have a reference first node to the first node in the chain, we can start there. We make comparisons as we move towards the end of the chain until we find the correct insertion point. Thus, we would compare six to two, then three and five, and finally with eight to see that six belongs between five and eight. To insert a node into the chain, we need a reference to the node prior to the position of insertion. Thus, during the traversal of the chain, we save a reference to the node before the current one, as figure 15.9 illustrates. Note that inserting at the beginning of the chain differs from somewhat from inserting elsewhere in the chain. Now imagine that we have a method insert order node to insert that inserts a node into its correct sorted position within a chain as just described. We can use this method to implement an insert sort by adopting the same strategy that we use to sort an array, divide the chain into two parts, the first parts being sorted and it initially containing only the first node. The second part is unsorted and initially is the rest of the chain. Figure 1510 illustrates how to make this division. We first make the variable unsorted part, reference the second part, and then set the, the link portion of the first node, node to, to null. To give this discussion some context, suppose that we place plan to add a sorted method to a class link group that uses a, a link chain to represent a certain collection as sorting requires us to compare the the objects in the collection they must belong to a class that implements the interface comparable thus the class definition begins as we're showing here Recall from the previous Java interlude that you can bound a generic data type in the header of the class definition this class has an inner class node that has set and get methods for its private data field. The following private method inserts the node that node to insert references into the, the sorted chain that first node references. The method to perform the insert insertion sort appears as follows. The, the, the local variable unsorted parts starts at the second node and then references each node in the rest of the chain as the, the loop executes. Each of these nodes is inserted in turn into the sorted part of the chain. Note that the length is the number of nodes in the chain. So let's talk about shell sort. The algorithm that we have discussed so far, sorting arrays are simple and often useful, but they are too inefficient to, to use on large arrays. This shell sort is a variation of the insertion sort that is faster, which has a big O notation um, N squared. During an insertion sort, our array entry moves to an adjacent location when an entry is far from its correct posi sorted position. It must make many such moves so when an array is completely scrambled, an insertion sort takes a good deal of time. But when an array is almost sorted, an insertion sort is more efficient. In fact, segment 1514 shows that the more sorted an array is, the less work the method insert in order needs to do. By capitalizing on these observation, Donald Shell devised in 1959 an improved insertion sort now called the Shell sort. Shell wanted entries to move beyond their adjacent location. To do so, he sorted the entries at equal, equally spaced indices. Instead of moving to an adjacent location, an entry moves several locations away. The result is an array that is almost sorted, one that can be sorted efficiently by using an ordinary insertion sort. So for example, figure 15, 11 shows an array and the group obtained by considering every six entry that the first group contains the integers 10, 9, and 7. The second group contains 16 and, and 6, and so on. There happens to be six of these groups. For now, sort each of these six um, groups of entries separately by, by using an insertion sort. Figure 1512 shows the sorted groups and the states of the original array as a result, noting that the array is more sorted than it was initially. So let's just um, finish up with a comparison of algorithms. So in this figure 1515, it summarizes the time efficiency of the three sorting algorithms presented in this chapter. Generally, the selection sort is the slowest algorithm. The shell sort by 
capitalizing on the best case behavior of the insertion sort is the fastest. Okay, with that, that will end our lecture. Thank you very much.